Three Body Problem was recently released on Netflix, and with it being billed as one of the most expensive Netflix scripted series ever, coming in at around $20 million an episode, I was expecting big things from it. With a sci-fi story being embedded within the core of the show, and with a threat from an alien species called the Santi looking to arrive at Earth in the distant future, let's jump into this video and break down all that there was to take away from the ending of it. So let's get into it. Here is Three Body Problem Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The Ending Explained So with regards to the ending of the show, it was all essentially building up to the staircase project, which was focused on sending a human into space, whether you still view them as human or not, as they're just a brain. And this was with the intention of going past the Sunsea, which were the alien species that were essentially looking to take over the planet. They wanted to take over Earth because they viewed it as a stable place to exist. There was originally the idea of being able to coexist with each other, but after realizing that humans often lie to one another and deceive each other, which is something that Evans revealed, something that the Santi don't have the ability to do, they realized that they'd rather conquer the planet and take it for themselves, whilst also getting rid of the threat of humans. The planet that the Santi came from was suffering from the three-body problem, where it was part of a three-body star system. The planet essentially suffered from being snatched away by different suns, which meant that it wandered through the gravitational fields of all three of the suns that were present, something which ultimately led to chaotic eras where the species would suffer and die, and the harsh conditions would be met. This is why, when back in the 1960s in China, when Ye Wenjie put out a message and then later got a response from the Santi, she put the fate of the world in question when she essentially invited them to head towards the planet. They'd made contact with a planet that was considered stable and somewhere that they could now inhabit. Even though many of them had died, if one of them survived, then they all did. Something which was a common saying throughout the show, and it was something that shone a light on the difference in mindset between that species and the human species. The deeper questions and themes that lied within this show were very much focused about human behavior and how selfish of a species we can often be. For example, the chopping down of trees that had been around for hundreds of years and had seen far more than any of us could ever imagine. The disregard of a severe issue that didn't directly impact us but would future generations. The idea of not caring about the fate of the planet because if somebody wasn't going to have children themselves then they shouldn't need to care about the threat even though it impacted the descendants of others. Plus also the disregarding of other species in order to make way for the need of one, the humans. That's why we saw themes and moments where the disregard for humans was something that was present by fellow humans too such as when Will refused to swear loyalty to the human race, and also why Yi Wenji actually invited them to come, because she'd almost lost hope with the human race after watching what happened to her father on a public stage, and also the way that she was treated too. She saw the horrors that humans could inflict onto others, and she believed that there could have been a better species that was out there, just like what Will thought too, so hence why the whole chain of events essentially kicked off. So, when it came to the Staircase Project specifically, with Will being somebody that was dying, Wade viewed him as being the perfect candidate to have his brain frozen and sent to the vicinity of the Santi, as it was a mission that would have likely led to death. With his brain being frozen, it meant that the Santi would be able to kind of defrost it and learn about humankind and rebuild Will into the human that he was, meaning that he'd no longer be ill. However, when the project launched, after a few of the bombs had gone off, one of the attachments got loose, which meant that Will's brain then started veering off into another direction, and it now meant that he'd be floating around in outer space for millions of years, meaning that the project had failed. Plus, it also posed the question on would it have been better to have just died or had your brain floating around for millions of years with the hopes of it potentially getting found by another species? Was that brain in the case still a human, or the moment it gets removed from a human body, does it cease to be one? It's something that's definitely thought-provoking. The Santi as a species were so much further ahead from a technological advancement perspective. However, due to them traveling and it seeming like it was going to be taking them nearly 400 years to arrive, the rate of progression is something which would have slowed down for them. And due to the humans' progression only increasing as time went on, it meant that the humans would be further ahead than what they were when they eventually arrived on Earth. Meaning that they'd no longer be seen as an advanced species, but they'd be less advanced than the humans. This is why we saw that they were taking out all of the scientists that were on the planet. They didn't want the humans to advance to a level where they'd eventually become more advanced and be able to wipe out the Santi when they realized that they were a threat. 
The Santi were able to do this because they created something called the Sophon. They created four of them and sent two down to Earth. A Sophon is essentially the Santi's weapon and it's a mind that's the size of the world. It's able to travel at light speed, hence why it reached Earth, and its intention was to wrap Earth in an illusion and feed the planet everything that it wanted to see. This was also what enabled the countdowns to be present in people's eyes to get them to stop working, for technology on the planet to fail, for messages to be shared where they referred to the species as bugs, and also for Tatiana to be invisible from the cameras and also reality when looking on. Because the world at that point was full of illusions and the Santi were already in control. This is also the reason as to why the Santi were able to see and hear everything. With it being the size of the world, it meant that it was all-knowing and was always listening and watching, so it was able to feed information back to the species and allow them to act. With the staircase project failing, that meant that the humans' hopes of being able to get an insight into the species was no longer possible. But alongside this, there was a project that was being led by the United Nations, which was called the Wolfacer Project. This was where three great minds were tasked with heading up a plan on how to beat the war that the planet was going to be facing against the Santi. Due to the Sophon, the Santi knew everything that was going on and what threats they could end up facing on Earth. So what the Wolfacer Project did was it elected three great minds to work solely within their own minds. This was so the Santi would have no clue about what was going on and what threats they could end up facing. And one of the people that got selected was Saul. Saul was facing a lot of people laughing at him when he said that he refused to be one of the Wolfacers. This is because they didn't believe him and thought that he was only saying it so that if the Santi were listening and were watching, then they'd back away from him. This was because they commanded one of their followers to commit an act of violence against him and try to get him killed. Even though there were many people that were against the Santi, for the many that were, there were some others that weren't, and they were essentially the soldiers of the Lord. People that believed that the Santi were a higher power and being and they worshipped them like they were. This is why the likes of Evans, Dr. Yi, Tatiana, and even the attacker at the end were acting the way that they were. When Wade was on his way back on the plane, we saw that Sophon appeared in front of him and reminded him of how fragile humans were and how right now they did have some kind of hold over the planet. They also said that they were looking forward to eventually meeting him. This is referencing him being frozen for hundreds of years, but waking up for one week a year with the intention of checking that the project continued running smoothly. So I feel there's probably going to have to be some kind of time jump at some point in the next season of the show. The final thing that we saw in the show was Jin and Saul together at the end and drinking away their sorrows due to the failed mission at a motel. They reflected on how the Santi called the human species bugs and how like what we often think, bugs are insignificant and a nuisance. But Clarence got them together and put them in a car and drove to a site where there were many bugs that were just flying around. It was here where we saw that they were thriving in the environment and showed that they've endured thousands of years of humans trying to get rid of them, but they just can't be stopped. This was him stating how in this instance, the humans are the bugs, and with the work that they're going to be doing, they're going to look for a way to be able to defeat the Santi and keep a hold of the planet. Thriving, just like how the bugs managed to do. Overall review. Personally, I thought this show was pretty good. I'm not gonna lie, I did think it would be a bit better than what it was. I felt like there were some really cool elements within it, and I think the first half of the show really captured the tone that I felt should have been present throughout the entirety of it. However, as the episodes went on, I feel it just started to fade, it slowed down a bit, and the sci-fi element of the headset, the Sophon's inclusion, and the dominating presence started fading and it felt like it was more focused on conflicting feelings and emotions from within. Which I do kind of get, because human nature was a large part of what was at the core of the show. But for me, it just made me lose something in it. I think the beginning was definitely better than the end. In terms of the performances, I don't think I could fault them in any way. You could tell that the people behind Game of Thrones were involved in this because it was like a reunion. We had Sir Davos, Samuel Tully, Varys, and the High Sparrow. I was also surprised about the sheer amount of British actors that were popping up in it too, ones that weren't necessarily the most well-respected in terms of the acting scene. But I thought the cast did a fantastic job nonetheless and they each allowed us to buy into their stories, trials and tribulations. Where I think this show thrived was in the way that it was shot. It was gorgeous on the eye, was so glossy to look at, and it really captured the sci-fi setting that it was setting out to achieve. I also thought that the visual effects of certain scenes were really cool too such as the horrific gore fest where everybody was getting sliced into pieces and when the ship crumbled into absolutely nothing. I also felt like the score in this show was pretty good too. 
I remember whenever the countdown would appear on the screen, it would be accompanied by a really harsh piece of music, and it was actually quite frightening. It got the sense of dread, terror, and fear across so well. Although Netflix hasn't announced that there's going to be a season 2, I feel like there's most certainly going to be. The show's based on a trilogy of books, and I feel like with it sitting at number 2 in the Netflix charts right now, that success is going to be going in its favor. So, there you have it. Three Body Problem Ending Explained.